Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can take a logo or an image inside of DaVinci Resolve and have it dissolve into a million particles. So the first thing that we're going to need to do to recreate this effect is to go into the effects library and drag a fusion composition onto the timeline. So you'll find this in effects library, toolbox, effects, and then fusion composition. The reason we do this rather than dragging a image directly onto the timeline is that sometimes the image won't have the same pixel resolution as your video, and therefore you can run into issues like having the sides cut away, but if we bring in a fusion composition clip, then it will always match the full size of your screen, but you can still resize the image inside of the fusion tab. So over on the fusion tab, we're going to want to drag the image we want to dissolve from our media pool onto the nodes area. So if you don't already have it open, you can open media pool on the top left hand corner and then find the image in your media pool. If you don't already have it there, drag it into the media pool from somewhere on your computer into DaVinci Resolve. You can also drag any image from your computer straight into the node section of DaVinci Resolve and it will automatically add it to both the media pool and create a media in node for your fusion composition. Here. So let's make sure that the image is there by left clicking on the preview circle and then media out will be our right preview. So next what we're going to need to do is create a image particle emitter. So with media in selected, so I'm going to right click, go to add tool, particles, and then find particle image emitter here. Left click to add it and drag the media in to the particle image emitter. And then with the particle image emitter, I'll click up here to add a particle vendor node that's necessary before it can connect to media out. So I'll connect particle render to media out, which should give us some kind of particle preview over on the right side. Now you'll notice here that the image I brought in is actually too large for the screen. So what I'm going to add is a transform node between media in and particle image emitter in order to control the initial size of the logo. So I'm going to right click on the line right after media in, go to add tool, and then down at transform, we're going to choose a transform node. So inside of the inspector with this transform node selected, we can control the size and the positioning of the image. So I'm just going to take the size here and lower it down till the uh, DaVinci Resolve logo there is quite a bit smaller and it can more or less fit on the screen. Now you also notice that the particles here are really tiny and we'd like to have the effect start with the shape initially intact and very visible. So I'm going to go over to particle image emitter here and find the style tab. And I'm going to change the style from point to blob. By doing this, we can have control over the size of those particles. And I'm going to ramp that way up until we can pretty much see the entire DaVinci Resolve logo as it originally was. I'll just put it at the max size of 0.5. So that takes our logo and has it essentially fully formed there at the start of our effect. And now we need to apply some forces to those particles over time in order to get that dissolved look. So if you want to keep things simple, in the particle image emitter, you can go over to the control section, which is the far left one, and go down to velocity. And you just need to give it a velocity, some velocity variance, so that the particles don't move at the same rate. And you may also want to change the angle Z. Uh, by default, if you add velocity, the particles are going to be pushed to the right, but you may prefer for them to be towards the camera instead. You could also have it at a diagonal angle, kind of whatever you like. So let's start by increasing the velocity a bit and add some velocity variance. And taking a look at how this looks, we can also play it back in the timeline. Of course, since it needs to render in real time, it may go kind of slowly while you're doing this, depending on how fast your computer is. After it's got the chance to cache the render, it'll play back a lot faster. So that can give you a really basic looking effect there. But you may want to make it a little bit more interesting. So we can add in a little bit of angle variance, a little bit of angle Z variance, and that'll make the particles go off in slightly different directions from each other, kind of like so. If you'd like, you can also add in a directional force node. So if I right click here and do add tool and go down to particles and directional force, we can have it accelerate the particles in a direction over time, kind of like having wind in the scene. So you may want this or you may wa not want this. Uh, you'll notice that with the directional force node selected, we can see the direction that the force is aiming at with this line here and we can drag that around to control the angle. So, so with that directional force, it might look a little bit more like this. So you can see over time, the particles are actually changing their direction. So that's just one other way you can kind of modify the effect and make it a little bit more interesting. But for now, I'm actually going to remove that directional force node and we're going to aim the angle towards the camera instead. So remove your directional force node if you haven't already, and then click back on particle image emitter. We're going to take the angle here and make it negative 90 degrees. So we're 
So we're basically just rotating uh, the main direction that it's going to be aiming our effect towards. In this case, it's changing it from the right to towards the camera. So you could also make it 90 degrees if you wanted to make it away from the camera, for instance. So now if we go back to frame zero and play our effect, we get this really cool dissolve of the logo into a million different colored particles. So this ends up being a really neat effect that you can play around with, and there's a lot of ways you can customize it. For instance, just by changing the velocity, the velocity variance, or the angle, you can make it look like a completely different effect. One more thing that you may want to customize is the lifespan of your particles. If you stick with the default lifespan, which you can find under the particle image emitter node, then the lifespan is going to be set to 100. And that means that after frame 100, that all of the particles are just going to disappear. So if you need the effect to go on longer than 100 frames, then you should increase the lifespan. So I'm going to ramp that way up so that it will basically go as long as it needs to. And what you can do to make sure that all of these particles stop rendering as soon as they have left the screen is to go over to the particle renderer and click on the first tab over here, the controls node. There's a checkbox called kill particles that leave the view. So for particles that are never going to re-enter the screen, this will help save your GPU some processing time because all of those particles that leave the screen are just going to be destroyed immediately, which means less objects for your computer to have to process. So it's a good idea to check this if your effect is going to be similar to mine. But that's the basic setup of how you can dissolve an image or a logo inside of DaVinci Resolve using particle image emitters. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.